Why do people love to collect cards? Why? Well, I think there's uh, maybe even a collector gene. There's shows about hoarders, and I'm not going to go that far, but I mean, people like to have stuff that they're proud of. And so it needs to be, if it's, if it's tangible, it used to be that, car, that your, your card collection could fit in a drawer or in a closet. Now you need a, a, a public storage for some people. So, uh, but it's whatever you make of it. So, so the fact that uh, a hobby that you can pick up when you want to and put it down when you want to, you know, it's, uh, people are collecting things. And this is, I think it's the best thing to collect because you can collect at a low level or at a high level. If you're super wealthy or not wealthy at all, you, there's a place for you to enjoy. And on that note too, there's levels and then, you know, you can collect if you want to in a very, you know, private fashion. People, if you wanted to, people could never even find out that you're a collector. You could just do it quietly or you could be very involved in the community and people could know you and you can share your passion and things like that. Uh, what do you think it is about uh, sports cards that, that makes them so eminently collectible for, for people like you, for people like me? Well, what the first part of what you said demonstrates that you can be an introvert or an extrovert and enjoy the hobby. So that's really, so that nobody's excluded from that. But, and then the on the field thing, that used to be the narrative that was so prevalent, but the COVID situation has proven that even when there aren't sports going on to, to, to bring that dynamic element, which I think is important, and I, but the, it's maybe not as important as what, as, 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 as what we had thought, because without it, cards are still going up. But it's kind of the eternal optimism of your of your of your home team that I'm here in Dallas. Well, the Cowboys are going to win the Super Bowl this year. We're convinced. And when you lived in Chicago, you were convinced that the Bulls were going to win. You actually were right, six out of eight years or something. But but there's an optimism about your team generally, or even if there's a pessimism, it's you know you're still tracking with it. But and so whether or not baseball, whatever baseball does this year, baseball cards are still going to be collectible. Now, they, they could be more or less collectible. I'm not one that says that card prices have to go up and up and up, and they'll never go down, because that, that I don't believe is the case. And uh, I hope it's the case, but it's, it's not. I mean, cards have gone down in my lifetime, but they've mainly been on a tra trajectory up. You have six decades in this hobby. Is there any moment over the course of those six decades that resembles the moment that we're in right now? Was it October 17th, uh, 1987? The Black Friday? Ah, uh, right. Yes, Black Friday, infamous Black Friday. Cards doubled almost overnight of vintage. Oh, that's a great story. Okay. Well, that's the first okay. time I thought about that. But that, I mean, what, but that was like almost overnight. I mean, just from one month to the next, it, all the vintage cards, and we, we, the, the prices were changing so fast we could, bar we could barely keep up with it. But it was just... It was people were, were moving toward those, you know, a different asset class because the stock market had let them down. But, yeah, that was, I mean, cards were just, the old cards were just what they were. And then overnight. And and I, so I, I, I you, don't have the right day kind of in the, October, but it's whatever that day was. It was fall of 87, October, I think. And are you kind of analogizing that then, I think, clearly, but just to make it explicit, kind of this COVID moment that we're having. It's where, a macro, you know, the macro condition. Yeah, there's no amount of micro. I mean, and, and you know, it, it, it was uh, the world changed. Okay, the the, the, the group psychology, the, 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 there was you know the movement of people. They just they they formed new habits. They looked at things differently. I mean, otherwise it's just a gradual increase, and and we're seeing a little bit now where more collectors come in. You know, the, the more uh, finite supply and more demand that can be kind of predictable. But a jump shift in the culture, which COVID was, you know, that who knew that when you're sheltering in, in place. You've got nothing better to do than buy cards and more buy than sell. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, you know, we have more collectors coming in. We have, you know, people coming in who maybe don't even have collecting background. Some do. So, like, in the, in recently I've been talking to people who, are, who have a fancy sports fascination. And then now they become interested in cards, too. Some of them, many of them, do have these nostalgic ties to collecting as kids because, like, this is a topic you've talked about. Cards were such consumables in the 80s and the 90s that almost everybody had some sort of touch to it who was like a sports fan, you know, and, and so forth. And, and so a lot of people have that connection, but people are coming in and they're, they're just looking at cards as like purely as assets. And like one of the things that I think about when I hear people talk about that is like maybe when they first start looking at cards, they're just looking at them as assets. But once you get a, once you get a slab in your hand and once you, once you have a card in your hand and you, maybe you display it, you know, maybe you look at it, maybe you like to track its movements, maybe you develop a connection with the player that you're collecting or the set, 
it can transform into something more very quickly. And you can even see people transform into collectors, even if they didn't come in for the purpose of collecting, maybe they came in for the purpose of, you know, quote unquote, investing. What do, you, what do you think about that? Do, do you think that, you know, the people who are coming in and they're maybe they're flippers, maybe they're investors, are these people convertible to collectors? If not, you know, what does that foretell for the hobby? Maybe you could give some thoughts on this topic. Well, I hope they are. I mean, I said uh, you're doing your part with your uh, podcast. I'm trying to do my part with mine. There are plenty of other really good podcasts out there. So if people come in and they think it's easy money, you know, a, I did a new money, old money, but it's basically the easy money is is the is the negative. If people come in, they say, it's no brainer. You just you buy something and then sell it for more. That's you know they've got to get educated, and part of that education is is understanding what's fun about it. And it's like and you, I'm quoting you. It's the the thrill of the chase. That's you know it's not about going into a grocery store and 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 just picking out the ones that you want. The the, the tricky thing is finding stuff that's not in the store, that's off the beaten path, that you're willing to go to a car dealership to 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 pick up to essentially have a three way trade for a car. But, you know, how many lottery tickets would you buy, Chris, if the losers could be could be uh, redeemed for 10 percent less than what you paid when they're losers? I mean, that's what we're seeing. You have a chance to really win something big. And if you don't, this card. And again, if it's slabbed, if you drop it, it's not damaged. Actually, you probably could damage it a little bit, but you get re slabbed. But, you know, they're not that fragile when they're slabbed. And it gives it, it actually gives the psychology of permanence of, of something being slabbed. And if it's a 10 or 9.5 or something, it's, that's, that, that, it's, uh, there's, again, some psychology there of people thinking this, this is different than having a card, piece of cardboard that, 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 that somebody could put in their pocket and sit on. No, it's a, it's a, it's a slabbed piece of, I don't know about art, but it's a collectible. And so it's not consumable anymore. And, and the, and the cards are not really intended to be consumables. They're not the free thing you get with the gum. There's no more gum. <laughs> and you know why they took out the gum? Because the gum put tops at a competitive disadvantage. Because when they had gum in there, they were restricted by the FDA to only use certain kinds of inks and cardstock. They couldn't keep up with the others who, who, could, who could do all these chromey kinds of uh, other treatments. They were higher end. <laughs> 